If you've listened to any music since the 60s, you've certainly heard a vocoder. It's responsible for a lot of those robotic chordal effects that you hear in Peter Frampton or Joe Walsh songs from the 70s. A vocoder takes a signal called a modulator and uses its frequency characteristics to modify another signal that's called a carrier. Now, Reason has a vocoder that's called the BV-512 vocoder. It's a little more complicated to set up than other effects since it requires two signals, a carrier and a modulator. So let me show you how to set that up now. I have a subtractor, which I'm going to use as my carrier, and I have a track with a subtractor, just an organ sound. And now I need the modulator, and I'm going to use my voice for that. So the carrier is connected from the subtractor into the carrier input of the vocoder. So what needs to go into the modulator is my microphone. If we scroll up to our hardware interface, we have the first two inputs cabled to our sampling input. But we're not sampling here. We need those audio inputs for our vocoder. So I'm going to drag the first audio input port, which is where my microphone is plugged in, and put it into the modulator input of my vocoder. And now I have a carrier, my organ, and a modulator, my voice. And when I play my organ and speak, here's what happens. I am now testing the vocoder. I am now testing the vocoder. I am now testing the vocoder. So I left my natural voice in there just so you could hear what I was actually saying. And you could hear the vocoded sound, which was the chords mixed with my voice. Pretty nice. Now I'd like to demonstrate some of the front panel features of the vocoder. And to do that, I'm going to change my modulator. Instead of speaking into the vocoder, I'm going to use a sampler and use the input from the sampler to my vocoder. Now what I did is I recorded my voice as a sample, and I'm basically going to play that back from my sampler, hook the output of the sampler into the modulator input of the vocoder. And I'll show you what that sounds like. So I have a sequence with a subtractor part, that's my organ, and then the NN19 part, which is a recording of my voice. And when I play them back, it's going to be just like I did before, except the voice is going to be coming from the sampler. So you can hear the vocoding going on. And just to review, the subtractor part is playing my organ sound, and that's cabled into my carrier input, and the sampler is cabled to my modulator input. All right, we have all of these frequency bands, and right now I have the vocoder set for FFT 512. It's actually simulating 512 separate bands of EQ, which we can control in groups by sliding these things up and down. Or I can change to a 32 band, 16 band, all the way down to four band. And watch what happens when I shape these bands. So it's really like an EQ for my vocoder. I have a hold button which freezes the modulation signal. And then I have attack and decay knobs that can control the dynamics of the sound. And a high frequency emphasis knob. Of course, there's a knob to determine how much of the dry signal gets through. With reason. This is and my shift knob lets me shift the overall frequency of the sound. Now what's really cool is if we flip the vocoder over, you'll notice that we have 16 inputs and outputs. 
This allows me a tremendous amount of control over those bands that you saw me fooling with. I can send in signal, I can send out signal from each one of those bands and process them differently. And I can, of course, automate things like shift, hold, and so forth. So I can do some sample and hold effects and other interesting things. One last thing, we can switch this knob and turn the vocoder into a plain old equalizer with either four bands, eight bands, all the way up to 512 simulated bands. And I'll show you that now. If I play back my sound, we won't hear vocoding. We'll just be applying an EQ. And of course, using those rear inputs and outputs, I can process different parts of the spectrum in different ways. So the vocoder is a very powerful tool. Obviously, you can use it as a vocoder and do a lot of interesting things, as you saw. Or you can use it just as a graphic EQ with separate control over each area of the frequency spectrum.